most accurately predicted of the 2021-2022 season. On YouTube, returns the factually best by knowledge. You will never see that I have a single main position. Okay? Let's go. What's up guys, it's MGD and welcome to a brand new video. This is the first proper video I've made in what feels like 15 years. I'm going to be predicting the Premier League table again, as considering the last one was two years ago. And it was also the literally most accurate predictions on YouTube. More accurate than Statman Dave. And that's his actual job. So I'm hoping to be at least just as good this time around. So without further ado, let's get into it. In 20th, I'm going to stomp on the fairy tale story of Luton Town. Yeah, it's a great story and all, but let's be real, it's, it's a toss-up between 19th and 20th. They have a pretty poor squad for prime standards. I mean, there's a reason it was a miracle they got promoted. I do think there will be at least one scalping of a big team, whether it's Tottenham, Arsenal or Chelsea, one of them, probably. Or actually United. United probably could. And I'm sure it'll be a fantastic match for the fans to cherish. They've just signed Ross Barkley, which is such a confusing signing. I mean, even if he plays well, I'd be very surprised if he was a Premier League level footballer. So yeah, I don't think he'll actually change as much for them. Unless he somehow has the effect that Morgan gives white hand at Nottingham Forest. In spite of the fact he's literally 30. In 19th, it's Sheffield United. They're basically just as shit as Luton just without any of the actual novelty of it being their first time or anything. They've lost what feels like pretty much all their good players. The most egregious of which is losing Sander Birch to bloody Burnley. I mean, come on. If it was like Liverpool or something, it'd be fine. But Burnley are in the exact same situation as you. How do you not convince him to stay? Admittedly, yeah, there's still time for them to actually sign some good replacements and I mean they got a, like what 30 million for Thunderbirds plus a bit more from other sales and it's probably still going to be an unimpressive season from the Blades. Last season was the first time in a while that all three promoted clubs stayed up so I mean we've already stopped a trend further we've already buried that trend but in 18th for the first time it will not be the club that actually came up. It's Wolves. I mean, they've lost pretty much their entire squad from when they finished seventh, like what, four seasons ago? Neves, Moutinho, Jimenez, everyone. Doherty is back, somehow, after doing seemingly a world tour of going to Tottenham and then Atletico Madrid for some reason. They do have a young core. But it's a young core that's going to be managed by Gary O'Neill. So, like, yeah, his sake and Bournemouth was harsh, but that doesn't mean he was good. I mean, there's a reason the actual Bournemouth fans weren't really that asked about the fact he got sacked. If this thing had love it, it could have just been a normal mid-table-ish season. Instead, they're going right down. I can't believe the guy got sacked before the season. That is so insane. Like, what's the point? What, six months? You might as well have just had him as the interim. But into the safety of 17th, I have put Nottingham Forest. Last season, yeah, they, they did stay up, but I feel like that was more off of the rest of the teams being absolutely dreadful than any of their actual resilience. I mean, they only won nine games in the whole season. They've added the likes of Alanga and Matt Turner, which is fine. Like, it's not exactly going to rip up the league, but, like, really, they should be fun. Like, it's more because the likes of Wolves, the Wolves, Luton, and Sheffield are way worse. And, I mean, they have a load of players to choose of. And, Stu and Steve Cooper's. It's probably going to be a nervy season for Steve Cooper's men. In 16th, I'm going to put Bournemouth. 
If they hadn't sacked Gary O'Neill, they I probably would have had them as favorite for relegation. But instead, they've gone in a new, as far as I know, better manager, Antonio Iraola, and a couple of quite decent signings. It does look like they actually want to stay in the division instead of just yo-yoing between the Premier and Championship. They have quite an exciting style of play, which has been seen in pre-season and stuff. Which I think they probably will beat some of the other relegation battling teams quite convincingly. But they'll also probably have the biggest loss of the season as they did last season. To probably City, Liverpool, one of them. 15th is Everton. Which I think, considering the amount of celebrations they've had in the previous two seasons over just staying up, is quite good. I mean, I don't even think they'll actually be in a relegation battle. In, in the last couple of games, at least. I rate Sean Dyche quite highly as a manager, at least for a team like Everton. Right now, they just need survival. They have a team that realistically enough should have more than enough quality to stay in the prem, at least. And with the type of money they spend on these players, they should arguably be aiming higher after they actually settle into being a Premier League club consistently. I have just realized how poor some of these mid-table teams actually are. Because in 14th, I've put Fulham, in spite of them losing their best player. I mean, that combined with the usual second season syndrome of a team that came in 10th. Like, it makes me feel like it, they have no business being as high as 14th. But I mean, Marco Silva is a pretty good manager. If that team doesn't seem poor enough to actually be lower than any of the other teams. So, somehow 14th. In 13th, I've put Crystal Palace. They've lost Zaha, which... And for, for and yet, for the first time in a long time, it doesn't actually seem like that will affect them that drastically. Hudson Paul at the end of last season completely threw me off with how incredibly good it was for some reason. I mean, Crystal Palace under Roy Hodgson should never be one of the most exciting teams to watch in the league. If they keep the likes of Gay or Lise, whoever's linked up, whoever's linked with being sold, they should basically stay in the exact average Crystal Palace position of 12th to 14th. 12th goes to the newest European champions, the Mighty Hammers, which again, not the best player, and I'm probably going to spend that money on McFire, McTominay, and James Ward Brass. Seems insane, but the fact is, they do, it does feel like they have a better team than the, almost the entire bottom half. And I mean, also due to the momentum again nearing the end of the season, they should probably be better this time. They won't get near Europe or anything. But I mean, in the Europa League, they could have a decent enough run, maybe quarters, semis. In 11th place, I reckon they'll have an end-of-season blitz upon the return of Ivan Tony. It's Brentford, one of the most well-run clubs in the league. So I don't think they'll struggle that much, at least. Especially because there are a lot worse teams than them this season. They do need a big season from the rest of the players, like MBM, etc. Especially considering, considering they're losing a 20 goal a season strike. I mean, for a lot of mid-table clubs in a lot of seasons, that would be pretty much bang or relegation. But if there was more quality, they might have been in a relegation battle at the start of the season. But with Thomas Frank, I think they should be fine. Into the dizzy height of 10th, it's Vincent Company's Paddy Burnley. Last season's best championship team. Play great football, I think they'll be basically what Brentford were in their first season. A team that'll try to beat everyone and I think they'll do really well. Especially against the pretty shit bottom half teams and win a couple games like 3-4-0. Not getting Nathan Teller back on one is going to be a pretty big loss though. James Stafford I think is going to have an unreal season and probably be linked with one of Chelsea or Tottenham by the end of it. But yeah, I think it'll be a great season for Burnley. In ninth is Brighton and Hove Albion. Last season's, I'd say, most fun to watch team. I do think they'll do well again, but they will end up in ninth, I think, mainly because the other teams around them will be better. The Serbia is a great manager. The likes of NC, so Mitoma, Ferguson, all of them could absolutely cook this season. 
and even if they sell any of those players, they'll probably re- re- they'll probably replace him with some random Cambian winger from the 15th division, and then he'll go seven Premier League goals. In eight are the latest Champions League contenders, Newcastle United. It this might seem harsh, but realistically, having to deal with a Champions League football with a pretty thin squad that they have. I think if they actually get past the group stage, will take a toll on the performance. I think the team has been improved by adding like Sandro Tonali, Anthony Gordon's improved as well, just over the pre-season. So and like it'll be a good season, but it'll it'll be a good season for Newcastle and not the insane season that it was yet last year. In seventh place, I've gone with Unai Emery's Aston Villa. Probably surprising to be above Newcastle, but I mean that's mainly down to them not having to deal with Champions League. Emery has completely galvanized this team, and from that corpse that Gerard put it in, from the fine from the coffin that Gerard put it in, the RB elements brought out as I mean those are incredible signings, which like Villa have been making pretty good signings before Emery as well. But now with him, it actually looks like they will be successes, and not just all of them end up being mid-table slouch. With him, I think they'll push for Europe probably. Now into the top six. It's the infamous top six, <laughs> or the big six. The likes of Spurs and Chelsea have gotten way better, so I think realistically, it's going to be more of a return to the norm at the top of the table. In sixth place, I've gone with Spurs. Postecoglou is a great coach, I think. At least for thought, they've gone away from that failing formula of trying to get instant success of Mourinho and Conte, which just would never have worked with Spurs. This is assuming Kane stays. If he leaves, it like switch this with Villa. I mean, they've signed a bunch of players, although they don't actually seem they don't seem like great players. Like I don't think they're going to push for the Champions League places or anything. But I think sixth is a pretty good first season for a new manager, at Tottenham especially. In fifth, I think Chelsea are coming back strong this season. While I don't think they actually have the kind of the kind of team to push themselves back into the Champions League or anything, and apart with the additions of Nkunku, although he's already injured, Lama, and I mean Nicholas Jackson seems like he might be one of the only. Chelsea attacker that I've seen not go to shit instantly. They have a squad that had no business being in 12th last season, so surely at some point, 600 million in transfers should come to fruition. Before the top four, I'm going to predict the Golden Boot, Golden Glove, Player of the Season, Signing of the Season, and Manager of the Season. Golden Boot and Player of the Season, I think it's pretty obvious. It's Erling Haaland, of course, or at least a golden boot should pretty much definitely be Erling Haaland. He might even beat his own goal-scoring record this season because City are more actually accustomed to playing with him now, unlike at the start of last season. Golden Glove, I reckon he'll actually go to Andre Onana because I think it's between him or Edison or Alisson is in the mix, but I mean. It, Liverpool haven't made any centre back signings, I don't think. And last season they weren't that good defensively. So I'm going to go with Onana probably. Because, I mean, David De Gea got a golden glove after the horror show of the season last year. I mean, he conceded 7, 6, 5, 4, like multiple times, and he is the one who ended up with the golden glove. So I think Onana. The Champions League finalist should be fine. And, I mean, because of the Golden Glove, I think he's going to be the signing of the season as well. Manager of the season, other than Pep, because it's always him when he wins the league, obviously. I reckon it's going to be company. Because, I mean, newly promoted team to 10th is always manager of the season worthy, isn't it? I think the top four, basically, everyone has predicted the same four teams. The other thing is, there is always one top six team that underperforms severely. Uh, last year there were two, but even last year, 
realized again it was Chelsea mainly. So I am going to do one normal prediction of the top four and also an outrageous prediction. But first up, I'm obviously going to go with what's more likely and hence the normal prediction. In fourth, I think Liverpool will have strengthened their midfield. They've strengthened their midfield, but also I haven't actually done enough of a rebuild, in my opinion, to get back to like the Premier League, Champions League challenging teams. Sean Bessler and McAllister are both absolutely quality. Uh, but I do think at the start of the season, they'll take time to gel together. Especially because, I mean, last season, Trent was a midfielder as well, so now... I, I don't know who they're going to get a CDM firstly. But like, really, I don't know who the hell is going to play CDM for them. Trent going back to right back is either a really good thing or a pretty shit thing. Considering going off last season's awful defending. But like, I think like they usually do near the end of the season, they'll probably be on fire win like a league cup or something. In third I've gone with United. Onan is a great signing after so much time United actually have a goalkeeper who can play football. Mount and Hoyland, yeah they're overpriced absolutely. And I mean everyone's overpriced when you have the glazes. So I'm not that surprised. I do think Hoyland will surprise a lot of people and because, I mean, yeah, the headline is nine Serie A goals in some, what, 26 games or something. But it's nine goals and a couple of assists in, like, what, 1,800 minutes. That's really not, that's quite good for an actual 20 year old. Like, I know he'll, I know damn well he'll get unfairly compared to Haaland, like Nunez was. But he will get, like, I think, a solid... 10 to 15 goals in the prem. In a truly shocking event. In a truly shocking event, I think the team with the best manager, best player, best midfielder, best defender in the league is probably going to win the league. <laughs> and hence leaving Arsenal to try their best to actually compete. Although I do think it's quite funny that they try to claim like there's some plucky underdog. When Arteta's already spent some 650 million on his team. I don't really think Declan Rice is going to be a 100 million pound midfielder. Timber is a pretty good signing though, but realistically, City has a treble winners. With, uh, what, with a striker who realistically should win the Ballon d'Or at this point. Of course they are going to win. City are going to make it four in a row. And segueing on from City will win the league based on basically every sensible thought in my mind. However, what if we had a little fun and I gave you a couple completely baseless, biased and straight up bullshit top 5 predictions and try to justify them. In 5th, Arsenal. They start the season poorly. They're like 8th in December. The fans have turned on our title again. Because they realized that they spent six years and more than six hundred million which doesn't mean anything. I to get sad because it doesn't look like they'll get top four. And then someone like I don't know, Julian Nagelsmann takes over and steers him into fifth. In fourth, Chelsea. And Kunko becomes the next time of drug by Lampard and then Alka all in one somehow. Watch pieces on the start and legacy and does the double over top spare. Mikhailo Mudrik is still shit and is sold for 20 million to launch. In third, Liverpool. This is basically the same as a normal production lemma. The only difference is I want a 15 mil loss at Anfield to Manchester, Fokin United, and Salah to retire and fuck off to Saudi Arabia. In second, Manchester Plastic City, baby. The only reason is that no club has won four titles in a row. Literally no other reason. They have lost Gundogan and Mares, which, like, other than Haaland, those are two incredibly important players. And stuff. Like, basically, those are the two players who you would expect to score in, like, your average league game. And then Haaland gets, and then Haaland gets injured for, like, what, 15 games? And hence only scores 22 goals. <laughs> 
and we mean that I may read that day, the sun be very better, we must wake up, the fucking copper labels are gorgeous, by God, it's the fucking United, I should win the golden boot, when I win the golden glove, Luna Fernandez, player of the season, then I get the boldest fat statue outside Old Trafford, and all is well in the world, anyway, back to Norman, thanks you for what, thank you for watching the video, let me know what your predictions are for the coming season, Let's see if any of my outrageous shouts actually happen. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe. I'll see you guys later. Peace.